Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, because you're still on the throne. And we thank you for this unchanging word, this eternal word you have given to us. And you want us to be doers of the word, to live by the word. Lord, we pray as we live by your word this year, great will be the fulfillment of your promises in our lives in Jesus' name. We're asking, oh Lord, that you lead us this year into transparent living, righteous living, sanctified living, holy living. As I should do that, the blessing of saints and the blessing of sanctified people, you grant to your people in Jesus' name. We pray that every promise in the word, every prophecy in the word, every declaration of the, in the word, you grant to your people in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, you make us real believers in the word, to lay by the word and to meditate upon the word, to understand the word, and to stand in all the truths of your word you are revealing to us in Jesus' name. I will pray that this year, great, great, mighty things you'll do for every one of us. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, everybody said, Amen. Thank you very much. We're looking at the word of God today. We're looking at this word. I'm talking about the pilgrims. That is the people you start on a journey. And you're going from this place to this place to this place. From January to February to March until December. And you keep on moving in the will of God according to the word of the Lord. And the Lord is saying as you go in the journey this year. And you go with faith. And you go with love. And you go with a life that pleases the Lord. It says the blessing of the Lord will be upon our lives. And that blessing will not miss you in Jesus' name. I'm looking at First Peter chapter 2 verse 11. First Peter chapter 2. We're looking at verse 11. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly laws which war against the soul. We're called to be saints. We're called to be pilgrims. And pilgrims are on the move. Pilgrims are going somewhere. This year, I am going somewhere. I said I am going somewhere. You will get there in Jesus' name. The Lord has spoken good concerning his people. His word declares all those prophecies and all those promises. And all those promises he has given us as to become like a pilgrim on a journey. And you're moving on. And then the things of the flesh, the works of the flesh, they come against your life. And you battle against them. And you stand upon the word of God. And the Lord is saying, for the people that stand with me and stand by me. For the people that stand upon my word, that my promises will be yes and amen in their lives. And those promises will not fail. I said those promises will not fail. He will surely fulfill his word in Jesus' name. Oh, what was he going to do? Look at Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. And I'm reading there from verse 11. What he wants to do for the pilgrims on the journey. Pilgrims on a journey to a better future. Pilgrims, that's the topic today. Pilgrims on a journey to a better future. Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm reading there from verse 11. Ezekiel 36, verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. You will increase. You will bring fruit in Jesus' name. And I will settle you after your old estates. I thought you would say amen. And I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And he shall know that I am the Lord. He shall know. When the Lord begins to fulfill his promise. Because he is a covenant keeping God. And he says this is what I said I will do. That if you become saved. If you'll be sanctified, if you'll be separated from the world, if you live a saintly, sanctified life, if you will follow me in righteousness and holiness, if you'll seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I told you, I will add all these things to you. And I want to show you that I am a covenant keeping God to the people obedient to my promise, to my precepts, and to my commandments. And it says, You will know that I am the Lord. This year, you will know the power of the Lord in Jesus. Jesus name 
you'll know the provision of the Lord in Jesus' name, and you'll know the fulfillment of a faithful God. You'll know the fulfillment of the promises of a faithful God, of a covenant-keeping God. He will do that in your life in Jesus' name. Pilgrims, where are the pilgrims? Praise the Lord. Every place you go this year will be a blessing. Everything you touch will be a blessing. And every place the soul of future shall tread upon, the Lord will grant it unto you in Jesus' name. All the enemies will clear before you. All the hindrances will clear before you. And then all the serpents and scorpions that might be on the way, on your way to the mountain top, or on your way to the peak, on your way to success and victory. All those um, all those serpents and all those snakes, they say that there's a spiritual snake or whatever, whatever kind of snake, you'll march on them in Jesus' name. And that place the wants the Lord wants you to reach, you will reach there. I know for myself, I said I know for myself. I said, I know for myself that all the places the Lord is leading me to, no enemy will hinder me in Jesus' name. And no enemy will hinder you in Jesus' name. As it does for your Father in the Lord, He will do for you. As it does for your Father in the Lord, I said, He will do for you. If you accept that, give me a good amen. Pilgrims on a journey to a better future. Your future will be better than the past in Jesus' name. I'm looking at this under three perspectives. Number one, the promise of a better future. The promise of a better future. Number two, the path to a brighter future. There's a path. There's a way. There's a road. There's an express road that leads to that brighter future. And the Bible declares very well the road or the path to that brighter future number three the pilgrims journey towards a blessed future the pilgrims who are journeyed or moving on onwards onto a brighter blessed better future number one what's number one on your notes there the promise of a better future we're back in ezekiel chapter 36 ezekiel chapter 36 i'm reading from verse 9 Ezekiel 36, verse 9. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you. And ye shall be, ye shall be tilled and sown, and I will multiply men upon you, and all the houses of Israel, all the house of Israel, even all of each, and the cities shall be habited, and the ways shall be built. And then it says, And I will multiply upon you man and beast. And I will, and they shall increase and bring forth fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates. I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know, and ye shall know, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And then if the Lord is going to do that, he tells us how he's going to do that. You know, so people, they just say, better future brighter future, blessed future, and you do not know what it takes and what the Lord is looking for before he leads you and conducts you and directs you to that better future. It tells us in this, in this chapter, look at verse, uh, verse 25, as we look at verse 25 of this chapter 36, it says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean, and then from all your filthiness will I cleanse you. And then it says, from all your idols will I cleanse you. It says, for that better future, it's not going to give to the people that are full of idols. They make self their idol. Or they make their own personal opinions their idols. It says, if I'm going to give you that better future, and I know you can do it, and I know it's going to do it. It says, I'm going to cleanse you from all defilement. I'm going to cleanse you from all filthiness. I'm going to cleanse you from all idols. And then it says, in verse 26, a new heart also will I give unto you. Give me a good amen there. And a new spirit will I put within you. It's a new year. A new spirit. A new attitude. A new mind. A new direction, a new lifestyle. It says, Yes, I'm going to do the better thing. Yes, I'm going to give you the better thing. I'm looking for the people that will allow me to perform the operation in their heart, in their life. And I remove that old stony heart. 
and I remove that old stubborn heart and then I give them a heart of flesh I give them a spirit a spirit that is gentle and lowly and humble and, and kind of malleable and can, you can direct that is salt in the sight of the Lord and it says I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh it says those are the people I'm giving that better future to I pray you'll be among the number when the Lord is counting the people that will have the better future, the brighter future, the blessed future, He's saying that I'm looking for the people. They allow me to preach their heart. They allow me to take the stony heart out. They allow me to take the sober spirit out. And they allow me to give them a heart of flesh. And when that heart becomes sought and becomes yielded and becomes submissive and becomes totally surrendered unto the Lord, then I give unto them the fulfillment of my promise, which is the better future. You tell me, if somebody was a drunkard, it means a drunkard, and you say, better future, better future, this is what you promised to the Lord. And God said, no, I didn't promise better future to drunkards. And then somebody remains with the smoking, somebody remains with all his evil, he remains with all his abominations. And they say, this is abomination. This is not trite in my presence. And you remain in that abomination. Then you say, better future, better future. It doesn't come that way. It says, I'm going to cleanse them and wash them and pour them and purify them and then I'm going to take away from them that stony heart and then I give them a heart of flesh the people that allow the Lord to do that for them those are the people he promises in verse 11 I'm going to give those people the better future I'm making up my mind this year anything God says is abomination I'm not going to allow that around me and when you don't allow that around you and then God says that this is my beloved son this is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. It's then the better future will come. It is coming. Yeah. I said it is coming. That's why you prepare your heart and you prepare your life. And you understand that God does not play with his treasures. God does not play with his peers. God does not play with his blessing. God does not play with his covenant. He gives the better future to the people that have all that sunny heart taken away from them. And they have the heart of flesh. I'm looking at verse 27. It says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. We will do it. I said we'll do it in Jesus' name. Because you know that's what the Lord is looking for. That's what the Lord said. If you be willing and what? Tell me out loud. Tell me out loud. If you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. The other side of the coin is if ye be unwilling and disobedient, ye shall not eat the good of the land. It is the willingness, the willingness to follow the Lord and the willingness to just bend and bow and submit to the word and the will of the Lord. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That's why it says, I'll cleanse them, I'll wash them, I'll purge them, I'll take away the stony heart and give them the heart of flesh and then I'll put my spirit within them. And then after that, I'm going to fulfill that promise for them. I'm going to give them the better future. I've got it in Jesus' name. Exodus, Exodus, Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. We're looking at the promise of a better future. This year, for those who are obedient to the word of God, for those who get out of the old lifestyle, for those who come into the new heart, into a new life, into the behavior, the character of a new creature in Christ, new things are going to happen in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 22. Exodus chapter 23, verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, you see that the condition is there. You know that, uh, you know, this year, as the old year, you know, passes out and then we come into the new year the people that they never go to church you know from february to december but january they are always in church even some people who are here you know they never come regularly during the year but for january covenant sundays i'm going to be there and then they are here and they think that there is no price to pay 
They think there's no need for repentance. They, need, they think there's no need for righteousness. It's covenant month. Everything I say, everything I write down, the Lord is just going to give me automatically. Look at this in verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, not some, not some of the time, when you give your life to a life of obedience to the Lord, it says, and you obey and you, you do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemy. You will be an enemy to your enemy and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and I will cut them up. And I shall not bow down unto their gods nor serve them no deal after their works it says yes, i'm going to give you the better future you look at all those idolaters don't do what they do don't drink what they drink don't eat what they eat it says you're not bowed down to their idols what if somebody you know keeps coming to the church and it keeps on bowing down to idols idols of money idols of women idols of self idols of sin and then he holds something more dear than the word of the Lord. What if is remains an idol worshiper? And he says, better days have come. Better life has come. Better future is here. And the latter will be better than the past. God says, no. That if you want that better life and that better future and that better glory, that all those idols of the past... All those sins you committed yourself to in the past, you're going to kind of throw them away. That's why it says in verse 24, But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall, ye shall, bless, ye shall bless your bread and thy water, and I will take away and I will take away, and I will take away, it will take sickness away from the midst of me. The condition is there. My brother, my sister, it's not an automatic thing that if I keep on walking the same old road and then I get to a new destination, the better life, the promise of a better future is for the people that are obedient to the word of the Lord. And therefore this year, our watch word is obedience to the Lord. I said I watch word is obedience to the Lord. That means that every day of the week, Sunday is the first day of the week. If you're going to obey the Lord for the rest of the week, Sunday is the first day. They time to demonstrate that and to say, Lord, I give my heart, I give my life to you. Everywhere I go and everything I do will be an offering of obedience to the Lord. And then he says, if you would obey my voice like that, I'll take sickness away from the midst of you. And none of those evil things will come upon your life in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Psalms 84, Psalm 81, Psalm 81. I'm reading there from verse 13. Psalm 81, verse 13. Here again, we we'll find the word of the Lord, what is telling us that better future that the Lord is promising the people of God is hinged, is built upon obedience to the word of the Lord. You cannot throw away righteousness and expect a better life this year. You cannot throw away holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and then expect a brighter future this year. Holiness and righteousness, spirit is sanctification in our hearts, in our lives, in our behavior. Everything that we do at all times must be there. And then we're going to have that better future. I will have it. I said I will have it. You know, temptations will come to us. Temptation comes to everybody. Temptation came to Jesus Christ. He resisted the temptation. If you keep on yielding to temptation, yielding to temptation, yielding to temptation, and then you say, then better life is coming, better future is coming. It's a lie. It doesn't come that way. 
Did this year will be worse uh, than last year than the past for the people that keep on yielding to temptation but the people that triumph over temptations coming against their lives those are the people that are going to have the better future there's no magic about the better future it is based upon the promises of god and based on the condition that will be the watch of the lord we're going to obey the word of the lord in jesus name i'm looking at some eight one some eight one i read from verse 13 it says Oh, that my people had hacked unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. He said, I wanted to bless them. I wanted to give them a better future. I wanted to give them a better heritage. I wanted to pour my blessings upon them, but they did not obey. That's why God said, Oh, that my people had hacked unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways then he said i should soon have subdued their enemies i promised them in exodus i was going to do that but i didn't do it because they need to obey i pray you will obey i said i pray you will obey and then he says and turn my hand against their adversaries look at verse 16 it should have fed them with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee? You only give them water out of the rock. And he thought that was all. He said, I was preparing to give them not just water out of the rock. I wanted to give them honey out of the rock. If they will obey my voice. If you will obey the Lord this year, is going to be the best year you ever lived in your life in Jesus' name. Something good will happen. I said something good will happen. When you're obedient to the word of the Lord. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. I read verses 4 and 5. Isaiah 56 verses 4 and 5. It says, For thus says the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths. That's the day of the Lord for us now. That's the day of worship for us now. The people to give keep God on the throne on that day of the Lord. The people that honor God every moment on that day of the Lord. The people that recognize how exalted God is, how high God is, how majestic God is. And in everything they say, everything they do, they keep the Sabbath day. They keep the Lord on the throne on that day of the Lord. Then it says, I'm going to do for those eunuchs, for those who have been unproductive, those are the eunuchs. For those who have no children, those are the eunuchs. For those who are impotent, those are the eunuchs. For those who are powerless, those are the eunuchs. For those who are almost useless in their lives, those are the eunuchs. For those who are wasting away, those are the eunuchs. He said, what, however unproductive you might have been. He says, however impotent you might have been. He says, if you will come to me, and on the day of the Lord, from the very beginning to the end, you honor the Lord in everything you say, everything you do, every way you act, every, every word you speak. You honor the Lord on that Sabbath day, on the day of the Lord. Look at what it says. And chooses the things that please me. That is, on that Lord's day, you choose the things that please the Lord. Then he goes on to say, and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons and of daughters. He says, if you come to me on the day of the Lord, on my own day, a day that is specially dedicated to the Lord, and you don't insult me in my own house. Belittle me in my own house. You don't despise me in my own house. And you don't reject me in my own house. You don't push me away from my own house. You honor me in my house. It says, those are the people I'm going to do better things for than the sons and the daughters of men. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Give me a good amen. That's what the Lord said he will do to the people that honor him on his day in his house. That's why during this year, you want to come to the house of the Lord with a heart. I'm going to the house of the Lord. In everything I do, everything I say, I'm going to honor the Lord, exalt the Lord. I'm going to please the Lord. I'll not insult the Lord in his own house. 
I'm not going to despise the Lord in his own house. I'm going to exalt him and be obedient to his word. And I'm going to go there to the house of the Lord with an attitude that is right, an attitude that is becoming, an attitude that is glorifying unto the Lord. He says, all those people that do that, and they make up their minds like that to decide that they're going to honor the Lord in everything, in every way that I'm going to give them that better future will have it in Jesus name. Point number two now is the path to a brighter future. The path to a brighter future. If you're going to get somewhere to a destination, to a destiny, there must be something that you do. There must be something to follow. That is, there is a road that leads you there. There is a path that leads you there. And the Lord gives us explanation in his word as to the path that leads us to the brighter future. You know, there are people, they just say, all they say is that during the service, better life, better future, and better glory, and better this, and better that. And they do not know that we need to get up and walk. What if a man, a farmer, is just sitting all the time there, and never goes to the farm, and I say, farmer, what's happening to you? Are you just sitting down? He says, pastor, better future, better future. I don't need to go to the farm this year. And then I'm asking the student, how about you? You're just staying at home all through the day. How about uh, you know going to school? Say, Pastor, don't worry about going to school. Better future, better future. And you know, when we come to the exam time, because this year God has promised me a better future. I said, You'll not go to school, Pastor, don't worry about that. And then I'm asking you, I'm asking her husband. The husband is living far away there, and then the wife is living far away here. And they say they're looking for children, and they never come together. They're not living together. And this year, God has promised all the barren people, is giving promise of children for them in Jesus name and then the husband is still over there and the wife is over there January passes and uh, you know they didn't come together February uh, they didn't come to March passes they didn't come together and you know you have to be pregnant for nine months before you deliver and then you say this year this year I'm going to have twins this year everybody say twins this year I'm going to have twins and then April has come now they have come together and I say a brother when are you going to go pack your load and go to live with your wife? He said, Pastor, don't worry about that better future. We don't need to live together. God is a miracle worker. And then June is passing. I said, woman, would you go and meet your husband? He said, Pastor, did you pray for us? Did you say better future? Better future has come. All those children have come. Will it happen? Who is at fault? I said, who is at fault? Is God a faithful God? Yes. yes, but there's a path that leads to that better future. There's a road that leads to that better future. If we're going to get the fulfillment of the blessings of the Lord, the Lord is saying there are ways and paths that lead to that brighter future. I'll show you. Look at Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4. In Proverbs chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4, there's a path that leads to that brighter future. If we keep on doing the old thing, if we keep on saying the same old thing and behaving the same old way, don't you ever think the brighter future will come? There's a path that leads to the brighter future. In Proverbs chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18 here, it says, The path of the jaws. You see that? That's what leads to the brighter future. The path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. That brighter future will come upon us in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Psalm 16. Psalm 16, the path to a brighter future. There's a path. Walk on that path. Walk on that road. It leads to that brighter future. We're looking at Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Look at verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. It says there is a path of life. And it's only when you walk there that you'll be able to get to that life, that abundant life, that sufficient life, and that blessed life. That shall show, you will show me the path of life in thy presence, in the fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. At thy right hand, pleasures forevermore. There is a path that leads 
on to that brighter future and the Lord is calling upon every one of us that look at my word and look at my precept, look at my commandment and look at what I've told you that this is the way that leads therein and take that path. We're looking at Psalm 23, Psalm 23, the path to a brighter future. I'm looking at verse 3. Uh, Psalm 23, verse 3, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. It is the path of righteousness that leads to that brighter future. It is not the path of unrighteousness, the path of rebellion, the path of sinfulness, the path of idolatry, the path of worldliness, that will not lead to the brighter future. The path of occultism, of idolatry, idol worship, that will not lead to the brighter future. It says, he restoreth my soul. I pray that restoration will come in Jesus' name. And then he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It is only then when I walk in the paths of righteousness. Look at verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head, what happens with oil, and my cup runneth over on the basis, on the condition that you are walking in the path of righteousness. It is that path of righteousness that the Lord shows you, that the Lord reveals to you, and He says, This is the path of righteousness. Walk therein. That is what leads you to the point where your cup runneth over. And I pray that as you're obedient to the word of the Lord today, your cup will run over this year. I said your cup will run over this year. If you have not lived in righteousness, you're missing eight days already. You're losing, you're losing your ground already. But if you turn around, he restoreth my soul. And he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And then he says, if you will turn around today, and you allow that restoration, because you know you're losing ground already. You're losing time already. That from the beginning of the year, you're just a future, future, brighter future, better future. And you are not doing what the Lord wants you to do. You're losing time. It's today the Lord is calling you back to that righteousness and back to that holiness. And he says, when he restores your soul into that righteous path, and then you are walking the path of righteousness, all these blessings will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 119, Psalm 119, Psalm 119. There is a path that leads to this brighter future. We're looking at Psalm 119. I read there in verse 35. Psalm 1, 1, 9, reading from verse 35, make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. That's the path that leads to this brighter future we're talking about. And the psalmist said, he said, oh Lord, I see your promise, I see your provision, I hear the prophecy, I can see that you have something better for me in the future. And I know there's only, way to, only one way to get there. It is to walk in the path, in the path of the commandments of the Lord. That's why it says, make me to go in the path of thy commandments. For therein do I delight. Look at verse 37. Turn away mine eye from beholding vanity. Turn me away from vanity. Turn me away from iniquity. Turn me away from sin. Turn me away from defilement. It says it is only in that condition. I'll be able to have that brighter life and quicken thou me in thy way. I pray God will answer that prayer. That means we're going to quit some path which is not right. You're going to run away from some path which is not right. If you're going to have that brighter future, we're looking at Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 10. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Uh, you cannot just uh, do whatever it is uh, this year because this is a special year. This is a peculiar year. And this is a unique year. This is a year that heaven has decided in the courts of heaven. The Father has announced to all the angels said that those people going to deeper life this year, I'm going to focus on them. I'm going to bless them. 
that all the people that you know, they've been making fun of you, deeper life, deeper life, the people are going to see the meaning of deeper life this year. You know, because the Lord is going to, the Lord is just going to specially, specially pour his blessing upon the people in this church this year in Jesus' name. And that's what the Lord is saying. That the Lord is saying, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. And I'm watching you, every one of you. And do not allow anything, whatever it may be, a small thing, a useless thing, a superficial thing, a non essential thing, an unimportant thing. Don't allow anything to block the pipe of the blessings of God in your life this year. I have made up my mind. I said, I have made up my mind. That nothing, 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 nothing will hinder the flow of the blessings of God in my life this year in Jesus' name. Ah, you said, Pastor, what else are you looking for? Ah, wait there. I said, wait there. Say, I will not wait there. I'm going to follow you and I'm going to be by your side like this. Every blessing you get is going to splash on my life. Give me a good amen. Didn't I read to you that those people had water out of the rock and they thought that was all? All I've got is water out of the rock. This year, I'm waiting for honey out of the rock. And all you've got, everything you've got, you've got saved, you've got sanctified, you've got married, you've got children, you've got a house, you've got a car, you've got a job, you've got this, you've got that, you've got a privilege in the house of God. All these opportunities, all that is water out of the rock. This year, I said this year, I said this year, honey out of the rock. That's why you're brushing everything aside. You say nothing will hinder the upgraded blessing of God in my life this year in Jesus' name. You know, the, the, the devil, he knows how to block the way, but I'm saying devil, get behind me. You know, all those people that oppose the blessings of God and they try to cheat you out of the greatest thing God has for you. They know the very time. They know the very time they come. I'm saying, all you opposition or opposers, whatever, get behind me. Those things will get behind you in Jesus' name. You know, they'll come to entice you. Go this way, go this way. Me, I've graduated from that one. This year, you will not catch me. I said, this year, you will not catch me. Ah, you should say it for yourself. Nothing bad will catch you in Jesus' name. And then when the Lord comes to pour out the blessing, he says, where are those deeper life people? Where are those deeper life people? And then he says, you are there. You know, some people, it will be at the time. You know, sometimes I, I look at people here, and when you come for combined service, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a vigilant pastor. I see a particular person, every time we say, let us pray. Then I see the person out there going out, go to the toilet, and then when I pray, I pour the anointing and all the blessing, and this one is catching the sun, this one is catching the sun. When we say, in Jesus' name, we pray, amen, then they are coming back from the toilet. They remain in the toilet when God is pouring out blessing. Every time, all the time we are singing, they will not feel like going to the toilet. Anytime we are preaching, they will not feel like going to the toilet. At the time when heaven is going to open, and all that is going to be poured down, it is then Satan will say, you have not gone to the toilet. And every Sunday you normally go to the toilet during prayer. Why don't you go now? He says, excuse me, Pastor, one minute. And then they have gone. When we put all the blessing, this one got children, this one got wife, this one got husband, this one got job, this one got house, this one got sanctification, this one got Holy Ghost baptism, this one got signs and wonders. When we have distributed everything, then they come out of the toilet, you see, the remnant, anything remain, we are finished. I said, we're finished. This year, it will not be like that. It will not be on the day that God wants to pour out something upon your life. On the day God wants to do something unique and peculiar and special. That then, the, you know, things you used to do, then you do, and God says, he's not ready. Me, I am ready. The Lord will make you ready in Jesus' name. Look at Proverbs chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 10. Proverbs 1, verse 10, my son, my daughter too, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lock privately, privately for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive uh, as the grave. 
and the whole as those that go down from the beach. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with was spoil. It says in verse 14, they say, Casting thy lot among us. Let us all have one pause. My son, my daughter, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain from thy foot from their path. We're talking about the path. The path to a brighter future. If you want your future to be bright, there's a path that leads you there. And you're going to refrain, withdraw, and separate yourself from the path of those wicked people. Because it says in verse 16, For their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And it says, And they lay wait for their own blood. They love privately, privately for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Look at verse 23. It says, Turn you at my reproach. Turn you at my correction. Turn you at my instruction. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. It says, There's no condition. If you're going to have the outpouring of the blessing of God, if you're going to have the outpouring of this better future, a better life for this a new year, turn you at my correction, at my reproof, at my instruction. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. It will happen in Jesus' name. It tells us that then in verse 33, whosoever acts unto me, shall dwell safely the secret in your life this year and shall be quiet from the fear of evil the lord will do it in jesus name we're looking at jeremiah chapter 6 jeremiah chapter 6 remember we're looking at the path to a brighter future the path to a brighter future that path you'll walk there in jesus name we're looking at jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 jeremiah 6 16 it says in verse 16, Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. What does that mean? The path Moses took, and he has such a great and mighty anointing upon his left. Ask for the old paths. What does that mean? Ask for the path that Joshua took. As for the part that Caleb took, and he became, he was still as strong at the age of 85 as he was at the age of 40. Ask for the path that David took that was able to take on Goliath and destroy the enemy of a whole nation. As for the path that the people of God took. And when the people of God, when they took that path, they were able to have the abundance of the blessings of God upon their lives. That's what the Lord is saying. As for the old path, in verse 16, wherein, where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. I pray you'll find rest for your soul. But look at verse 16, end of verse 16, end of verse 16. But they said, but they said, tell me out loud, for they said, who do we blame? You know, some people, if Jeremiah is so strong and mighty, how is it? All these uh, Nebuchadnezzar's army, they come to devastate the whole of Judah. And Jeremiah is there. And Ezekiel is there. And these people that say they are great prophets of God, they are there. And yet, all the things that the Lord has promised, we are the children of Abraham. And God has said, I will do this for you, I will do this, I will do this for you. Where are the blessings of God that he promised us? Is, was it Jeremiah's fault? It was in Jeremiah's fault. He told them that it is the path of righteousness that leads to that destination. And he called, he said, come, seek, see the old path. See how Abraham became the friend of God by obedience. And see how Moses saw God face to face. And he had the power of God upon him by obedience to the word. And see how he destroyed all the powers of Egypt by the power of, by the, power of the spirit of God upon him by obedience. And see how Joshua conquered all those Canaanites by obedience to the word of the Lord. See how Elisha had the double portion by obedience to the word of the Lord. And Jeremiah said, seek for the old path. 
and walk therein and ye shall find rest and provision and blessing for yourself and they said well will not will not walk therein who will you blame then god says this is a prosperous year this is a great year this is going to be a unique year this is going to be a special year and this is going to be a year of abundance this is going to be a year where all pineness is taken away this is going to be a year when children our children they'll be head they will not be telling jesus name but he says there's one condition you seek for the old past the path of obedience and holiness and walk therein and then if the people say no we're not going to walk therein you cannot blame the pastor oh they said you know the pastor if he prays for you this will happen that will happen but have you seen him and nothing happens they say that you know the barren those shares the testimonies who are hearing somebody had been married for 20 years and they saw the pastor and he prayed for them and brightness went away and now they have children another one you know have been barren for 25 years and then they saw him he prayed for them and then all brightness went away and they had children and then i have gone to him and then he prayed and prayed and prayed for me and look at me now i'm still like this <laughs> whose fault is that i said whose fault is that I'm saying that if you come to the old past this year, one single prayer will drive a thousand problems away. That's what God said. He said, one man of you shall chase a thousand. One single prayer of this one single day can drive thousands of problems away in Jesus' name on the condition that we find the old path, the ancient way. And then we'll walk therein. And we will not allow all the past lives and all the actual paths to hinder us. And we'll say, this is the path we ought to walk. And we're going to walk in that path in Jesus' name. In Hebrews, I'm reading chapter 12, verse 13. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 13. The path to a brighter future. The path to a brighter future. Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm reading there from verse 13. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 13. It says, make straight paths for your feet. Straight paths, not crooked paths. Not on scriptural paths. Not a kind of deceptive paths. Not paths, Broadway. Broadway paths. That we just want convenience or comfort. But it says, make straight path for your, for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it be rather healed. Follow peace with, tell me, all men. And holiness without which, tell me the rest. No man shall say the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall say the Lord. When we walk in that path of righteousness, I'm telling you this year, you'll not be able to carry all the blessings. They just overflow and overflow and overflow in our lives in Jesus' name. I'm looking at the, the pilgrims' journey toward a blessed future. The pilgrims' journey towards a blessed future. The pilgrims' journey towards a a blessed future. We're looking at um, First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 7 and from verse 8. First Kings chapter 19. I want to see something here as we're going on the journey. This journey this year, we need the grace of God for this journey this year. We need the provision of the Lord for the journey this year. We need the power of the Lord for the journey this year. We need the bread of heaven for the journey this year. Look at this in 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm reading there from verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. Didn't Elijah eat the previous week, the food of the previous week? will not take him on this journey in the future. Did you need to take the word of God and eat last year. The food of last year will not sustain you for the journey that's in the future. This is a new day. This is a new year. And this is something, a new thing the Lord wants to do. And he's saying, get ready, arise, and eat. Because the journey is too long for you. It tells us in verse 8, and he arose, and he did eat, and drink, and went in the strength of that meat. In the strength of that food, 40 days and 40 nights, unto hurry the mouth of God. He got to his destination, you'll get your destination. I said, you'll get your destination. The angel came from heaven. He said, all the food around. Doesn't that tell us something? All the food you can find, all the messages you can find, all around you, they will not be enough, they will not be sufficient for the journey ahead of us. God had to send an angel from heaven. 
and then he woke Elijah up and he said arise and eat this is the only kind of food you can eat that will take you to your destination in this new year because the journey is too long for you look at Psalm 78 and see what the Lord is saying there Psalm 78 in Psalm 78 the Lord is telling us something about the kind of food that we need to eat so that the journey ahead of us will be able to get through and we're going to get through in Jesus name Psalm 78 Psalm 78 I'm reading there from verse 20 verse 25 man did eat angels food Elijah man did eat angels food the children of Israel they ate angels food man did eat angels food he sent them meat to the full. He fed Elijah. It was an angel. The, the food that the raven had given him before it would not be sufficient for this new journey. And the food that that widow woman had given him before would not be sufficient for this journey. He took angel's food to be laid before him to say, Arise and eat because the journey is too long for you. This year is as you rise so every day you eat this bread from heaven. That's when you are going to be able to go on this journey on the path that leads to this blessed, brighter future. Matthew chapter 4, verse, verse 4. Matthew chapter 4. I'm reading there from verse 4. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. By every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's what it's going to take for us to be able to uh, get to that land. We're going to get to the place in Jesus' name. I said we're going to get there in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I read there from verse 6. See what the Lord is telling us. The Lord has looked at our lives. He's looked at your life. He's looked at what you've got. And he has looked at what you have not got. And he sees what he has provided for you. What he has provided before you. And he's saying, I have something great for you this year. Something better for you this year. But he wants you to get up and do something. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. The Lord is saying, look at your condition. Saved, thank God. Redeemed, thank God. Brought near unto the Lord, thank God. But the Lord is saying, you have stayed, you have dwelt long enough in this mount. You know, this same place we have been, we are just doing some merry-go-round. It says we have been too long here. Many things we should have got. Many places we should have reached. And many highs we should have gone to. And the exaltation the Lord wants to give us. And we're in, it's a new year again. Another opportunity has come. Another privilege has come. And the Lord is saying, we had covenant Sundays last year. We had it the year before. And I know what I wanted to do. And you remained in the same place, in the same location. And all the things I wanted to pour upon your life. You didn't allow me to pour them upon your life. I want to give you honey out of the rock. I want to lift you to the heights. I want you to make, I want to make you the head and not the tail. I want to give you special privileges never had before. But you have always been staying on this same level, on this same platform. And the Lord is saying we have dwelt long enough in this mount. In verse 7 it says, turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites. It's saying we should move forward. We are going to move forward. I said we're going to move forward. Look at it in verse 8. It says, Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land. It says, We have dwelt long enough here. We have dwelt long enough in the same place. And it's saying, I want something higher, something greater for you. And this is the year that the Lord has ordained. And you don't want this year to pass you by again because. If this year passes again, I will show what will happen next year. Next year passes again, and then until you come to your old age and everything God said, look at this man, look at this woman, look at this daughter, look at this son. The things I wanted to do, he allowed or she allowed this little thing like a pain. This little thing like peanuts. He allowed this like an unessential. He allowed this little thing to hinder him. What a pity. I pray that nothing will hinder us again in Jesus' name. Chapter 2 verse 3. The Lord said it again. Chapter 2 of Deuteronomy verse 3. It says, Ye 
have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you not watch. Go onward. Go up. You've been long in this for too long a time. And the Lord is almost impatient with us. He's saying, I want to pour my blessings upon you. I, I pray that God will not withdraw his blessing this year again in Jesus' name. Those miracles again in Jesus' name. That's what the Lord is saying. Numbers chapter 10. Numbers chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 29. Numbers chapter 10. We're looking at verse 29. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Reguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, were journeying unto the place of the which the Lord said, I will give it to you. This church, we're on a journey this year. I said on a journey this year. An upward journey, an onward journey, a progressive journey. We're going somewhere this year. I am going to get there. You are going to get there. We are going to get there in Jesus' name. We're journeying unto the place of the witch, of which the Lord said, I will give each unto you. Come thou with us and we'll do thee good. And I can tell you the same thing because I've seen the glory that is coming. I've seen the exaltation that is coming. I've seen the blessing that is coming. My eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. And I see the church marching on and getting to that thing the Lord has promised for us. And I know that this year for everyone that hears the sound of this voice and this message, I will connect with the message and will say, yes, I believe. If you believe it this year, it's going to be the best year you ever live your life in Jesus' name. Enemies will fall before you. Help us will just be coming to you from every direction. If you will hear the voice of the Lord from the message you are hearing and you brush every kind of hindrance away, the Lord is saying that he's taking us to a good place. And he says, come thou with us and we will do you good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning us. The Lord has spoken good concerning us. I am going to be there. I said I'm going to be there. I said I'm going to be there. I said I'm going to be there. We'll be there in Jesus' name. Why don't you rise up then and commit yourself to the Lord and say, I'm a pilgrim on a journey to a better land. I'm a pilgrim on a journey to a better success. I'm a pilgrim on a journey to a better future. I'm a, I'm a pilgrim on, to, on a journey onto the better fulfillment of the promises of God. You raise your voice to the Lord and say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I'm not going to be like, you know, the old person I used to be, the old life I used to live, and the old actions I used to manifest. Lord, I'm on a journey, on a journey, on a journey to a better place. I'm going to get to that better place, the promise of a better future. The Lord already promised I'm going to do better unto you than at your beginning. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. Better unto you than at your beginning. Give yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to see that better thing. I'm going to see that greater thing. I'm going to see that higher thing he doesn't joke he doesn't play he doesn't gamble with his goodness with his provision with his promises tell the Lord yes promised and the promises unto you yes promised and the promises unto you and the Lord says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye be unwilling and disobedient, you'll see others having it, you'll not have it. You'll see others driving, diving into the depths of the ocean of the promises of God, but you'll not have a taste of it. Sin will be a great barrier between you and the blessing. Idolatry will be a barrier, a wall of demarcation between you and the blessing. But if you say, Lord, he restoreth my soul and leads me the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That's what will lead you there. Walking in the path of righteousness. In the way of holiness. The highway of holiness. All uncleanness taken away. 
all defilement taken away all of the old life past life taken away you follow the path of the just the path of the righteous the path of the saints the paths of the sanctified the highway of holiness a better future brighter future blessed future in jesus name we pray you are warming up now i said in jesus name we pray are you ready what are you ready for i said are you ready to walk in the path of righteousness are you ready to surrender your life fully to the lord are you ready to say by action by attitude this year will be a year of holiness i said are you ready if you are not ready put down your hands only those who are ready that this year holiness this year righteousness this year purity this year restoration walking in the path of righteousness this year i say again are you ready yeah. now for the mountain top are you ready for the mountain top yeah. are you ready to be the head yeah. are you ready to go to that better place the lord has appointed for you yeah. not word of mouth not word of mouth you watch you watch i'm telling you this year this year you'll see me at a greater height I said for me this year you'll see me at a greater height I said you see me at a greater height I'm serious I'm serious I'm serious I announce to heaven I announce on earth I announce in the church I announce in the city I announce everywhere that this year you'll find me at a greater height announce it to everybody announce it to your friends announce it to your enemy announce it to yourself that this year this year this year this year, this year, every exam you failed before, you'll pass it this year. Everything you tried to get before, you couldn't get, you'll get it this year. Anything that slipped away from you in the past years, you'll get this year. Any joy you didn't have before, you'll have it this year. Any happiness you didn't get before, you'll get it this year. Any job you didn't get before, you are getting this year. Any wife, the wife you should get, you didn't get before, you'll get that wife this year. Any husband you didn't get before, you are getting that husband this year. Any child, a child you didn't get before, you are getting the child this year. Any promotion you didn't get before, you are getting this year the joy of the lord will be your strength the happiness that god has poured upon our lives is going to give unto you this year in jesus name we pray in the past year you be, you feel small because your enemies made you feel small this year you'll feel great you lost self-confidence you lost boldness you lost courage and then they bent your back at, at 25 you are bending down like this looking down and you are not able to look at the face of people at the eyeball face to face and anytime anybody try, tries to threaten you they just cow you down like this and then it's like you're an old person now now square your shoulders and you know, to your full legs and stand up like don't close your eyes look at me here look at me here and then that's how you look at people today when you go for an interview, you look at people. You don't look down like this. Let them know that something is inside this place. I said something is inside that place. You didn't come there to get a job from them. You came there to tell them, it's my job, give it to me. I said, it's my job, give it to me. You know, all the children, you know, sometimes I, I see, you, you go to the marriage committee. As you are going to the marriage committee, you say, what will I say? What will I say? And you're trying to check up your notes. You are writing down. Uh, I met, uh, I, I, I had a dream. And then you are reading, oh Lord, help me to remember. And then all this. And then when you get to the marriage committee, and you say, what have you come for? Then you say, eh, 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 I want to marry this year go go there and tell them i'm getting married i said go there and tell them i'm getting married in jesus name no sickness will plague your life this year no discouragement will plague your life this year 
No fear will plague your life this year. You will get to the top. I said you will get to the top. Raise up those hands and remember, remember before I pray, those hands you are going to lay them on the sick. And then when you lay them on any business that you are doing, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, blessings will come in Jesus' name. I'm going to raise up my own hand too. You'll not be the only one because this one, I have part in this one. I said I have part in this one. I said I have part in this one. Are you raising up your own hand? Father, in the name of Jesus, God of heaven, God of earth, God of covenant, God of promises, God that will never fail, we call upon you for every brother, for every sister, for every boy, for every girl, for every family, hearing my voice now. Oh Lord, I pray every negative sin that plagued their lives in the past i cancel in jesus name that incurable disease i say no to you that oppression i say no to you that attack i say no to you that satanic affliction i say no to you that that night a problem i say no to you all those spirits from the forest and from the moon and from the river, I say no to you. All those things that come and to press people down and to press their prospect down, I say no to you. I command you, get out of their lives in Jesus' name. Every enemy, I drive away from you. Every adversary, I drive away from you. All the paths of darkness against your life, I crush them, I destroy them in Jesus' name. You spirit of death, what are you finding there? That is a child of God. Whatever has happened in their families, whatever happened to uncle or cousin, whatever happened to anybody, this one you will not touch. And I command you spirit of death, remove your hand away from them in Jesus' name. Lodge all the families in this church that have been married and then there's no child. They say, is this reason? Is this reason? Is this reason? All barrenness, I take authority. I cancel them in Jesus' name. Wife, you are not barren anymore. Husband, you are not impotent anymore. Before the end of this year, you will glorify the Lord with your living babies in Jesus' name. Lord, we your people, we are not the people eating the remnant from the table of the people of the world. Lord, we are going to feast this year. A feast is set before us this year. Those who are jobless, I pray Lord, open the doors right now. And those who have, don't have anything living from hand to mouth, oh Lord, pour your blessing down from heaven right now in Jesus' name. Lord, no sickness this year, no infirmity this year, no oppression this year, no affliction this year. I pray, Lord, you break every yoke. You destroy the works of the devil in the life of everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, this year is a year of holiness, a year of righteousness, a year of submission, and it's a year of purity and sanctification. And Lord, as we walk in the path of righteousness, Lord, beyond what we have prayed for, above what we have prayed for, greater, higher, deeper, broader, longer, you give to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I don't want to hear that any member of this church this year is crying, is sorrowful, is bereaved, is jobless, is poor. This year, Lord, make it a year that is special for this church in Jesus' name. We'll have enough and to spare, enough and to share, enough and to distribute. As you go on the way, blessing. As you enter your car, blessing. As you enter the bus, blessing. 
as you go home you sleep at night blessing when you wake up tomorrow you go to a place of work blessing whatever is happening all around only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked a thousand falling by your side ten thousand by your side it will not come near you in jesus name the lord will preserve your life he'll protect your life and when we meet again when we meet again songs of joy songs of celebration in the mouth of every one of us in jesus name confirm it in the life of everyone confirm it in the life of everyone in jesus name we pray amen i believe i believe i believe it shall be so i said it shall be so how many of you truly believe you truly believe this year you'll find it out everything is done and everybody said amen